Hello everybody! The weather is very bipolar these days. This morning it hailed, then it rained, and now it's sunny. So it's very indecisive. So with that being said, we can't work too much outside because it's, the weather is just too unpredictable and we can't be doing any metal work, which is what we need to do for the fifth container. So we're going to do some things on the interior of the second level. We finished welding all of the vertical and horizontal pieces of flat bar into the interior so that's done so now what we're gonna do is remove some of the plastic where the door frames are uh, same like how we did on the first level but we will go ahead and remove these peel these back right here we have the tubing so we'll weld a piece of the angle iron that we have there weld it to here maybe like three or four down each side so that when we go to install the doors and windows we have something to anchor them to so that's kind of our project today we'll definitely get it done but other than that we'll see what else we can do here we go a few years ago we decided to quit the rat race and venture down a completely unfamiliar path in life. We sold almost all of our possessions, renovated a camper van, and toured the US looking for a piece of land to start our journey. After almost two years, we found our piece of paradise in the Pacific Northwest, and Pacific Pines Ranch was born. Follow along as we chase our dreams to build an off-grid shipping container home, and to see our projects and adventures along the way. As we like to say on the ranch, the joy is in the journey. First step was to measure and mark where I'll be welding the door anchors in. We had a leftover piece from installing the doors on the first level. You can see that video right here. So we took that piece of angle iron out and marked where we need to cut to make the door anchor pieces. Then Viant got to work and cut all the pieces that we will need for this project. While Viant cut the angle iron, I used the angle grinder to clean where I'll be welding the anchor pieces onto the door frame. Once all the pieces were cut, we worked together to get them welded to the door frame. We worked our way around the door frame, welding the angle iron in place piece by piece. The angle iron needs to be flush with the tubing of the door frame, so we used the right angle and magnets to hold the angle iron pieces in place while I tack welded them. We always work together on each project to try to balance the workload and optimize our time. And it's also a bonding experience. So at this point in the build, we are really bonded. <laughs> The 
The last part we did for this door frame was the top, so we measured and marked where we needed to weld the door anchors and did the whole process over again. And here's the final product. Now the sliding glass door is ready to be installed into this opening. How exciting. So now we're moving on to the next opening. So we had to remove our Dexter kill room looking plastic to access this door frame. It's for the rain, I swear. Violent used the angle grinder with the resin disc to clean the areas where I'll be welding the angle iron into place, which is step one of grind, weld, paint, repeat, and something we do quite often on the ranch, but I guess that's life when you build a house in steel. So once the pieces were in place, I went around and welded them onto the door frame. This sliding glass door is a little bit bigger than the previous one, so we had a few more pieces of angle iron to weld. And it's done! Here's a few pics of the process and Viant admiring his work. And of course the view. Alright, so as you can probably hear, it's raining. <laughs> really the thing we battle the most here in the northwest is the rain. Even times where they say it's 0% chance of rain, sometimes it rains. So what can you do? That's life. But the good news is, is we did get everything finished in a layer of paint on the angle iron that we welded in today. So this is good. At least the paint is on. You can see all of them here, up there, over there. Some of them have uneven spacing because when we install the doors based on where the panels are, sometimes they can't be even because it'll be directly where the panel hey, ends. This is beautiful. Isn't that right? Wow. The sun it's literally sunny and raining at the same time right now. It is super, super pretty, but we have to be thankful because without this rain, it wouldn't be so green and so amazing, easy. and we probably wouldn't have a creek on our land. <laughs> so there's a little bit of silver lining in that. So here we got this side. Like I said, there's some uneven spacing based on where the, the handle, it, the lock is for the door and where like the panel ends and all that so that's why they look a little off in places it's for a reason so there was two hooks here we grinded those off removed those it doesn't matter too much if it rains tomorrow because we will be totally inside so i'm glad we had at least a few hours of sun today to finish welding these angle iron in so i think we're done for today huh yeah. Good job. Successful day out on the ranch. Until next time. So, to explain a little bit. We welded pieces of angle iron onto the tubing of the door frames. We will drill through the doors and use a self-tapping drill bit to tap the angle iron. Then we will use a flathead bolt to bolt the doors to the angle iron. After that, we will fill the small gap around the doors with spray foam and then sealant on top of that on the exterior. And this is what it ended up looking like. What a view, huh? So I didn't get a chance to film when we installed this sliding glass door and that one over there. So I am gonna do a little walk around and show you guys how we installed the door and yeah, hopefully that will help answer any questions that you guys might have. And if you have any questions that I didn't answer, comment below.
So how we connected this door to the little anchor pieces is we drilled the door and we tapped these angle iron pieces right here. So this little screw goes through the door and through this angle iron piece and this piece is tapped. So the thread holds everything in place. Then we use some spray foam to hold the door in place and seal the gap, the small gap that was between the frame and the door. And then we went ahead and sealed the exterior with sealant. As you can see, the view is really nice. It's one of my favorite things about the house is just how open it is and how one day, eventually, I'll just be able to sit here and enjoy all these beautiful views. So that's what we did to install this door here and then the door that's back over there. We did the same thing on the first level. We did the same system with the angle iron with the screws and the spray foam and the sealant and everything like that. And they've held up really well over the years that we've been building. So we're pretty happy with how it came out. There's probably like a bunch of different ways that you can do it, but this is just what we came up with and what worked for us. So hope it helps some of you guys that are maybe facing the same challenges building a container house. Like I said, there's a bunch of different ways to go about doing all of this stuff. So as always, thanks for watching you guys and until next time. In our next video, we will start to convert the fifth container for our container house, which will eventually be on the third level. So be sure to subscribe to our channel and follow our social media pages to join us on our container build journey on Pacific Pines Ranch.